Hello. So today is, today, we are on a different trail and you can hear the sounds of nature behind me. Um, some sort of construction thing. Different trail today because as soon as I got here, there was another person who got here at the exact same time, which is always fun. And they walked ahead of me and they were as fast of a walker as I was, which is frustrating because that means that I couldn't pass them easily and then get ahead and pull away. But I was just gonna be behind them the whole time. Anyways, <clears throat> so today, what do we wanna talk about? We wanna talk about <laughs> exercise, responsibility, and phone calls. We'll start with the morning. Um, I did end up going to the gym, so happy about that. Um, I was having dreams of skipping or of also being at a different gym. Like I was, it was, that's all I was thinking about. But like woke up, the, the dream literally ended at six o'clock. Like I opened my eyes and looked at my phone and bang, then the, the, the alarm started going off. So that was super cool, the timing of that. Also felt rested, so that was nice as well. Um, but so then got up, got my gym clothes and everything, drove there, easy drive there. Um, all I did today was just went on the stair climber and climbed, I think it was like 1,450 steps, which I don't really know what it is. I chose the preset mode that went for 30 minutes that was like training, like it was just like a big hill kind of thing. Um, but so, because the goal was to get over the gym anxiety, overthinking thought, cool, crazy, fun stuff. I could have gone that cool path. But I didn't. Um, but so that was good. I looked in the inside of the gym, rather busy for like 6, 15 in the morning. Um, but didn't look incredibly busy. Like, like it was populated. However, like there were bench presses available. The squat racks I'm concerned about just because they're the ones that ha are on the bars. Like they're not full on free weight. So it's more like a leg press, but just on your shoulders, whatever. It's something. Um, but so I think tomorrow I'm actually gonna go and do lift weights, like actual free weight. ChatGPT, who is my personal trainer now, um, has suggested that I start with, uh, what is it, chest and triceps, which are both push muscles. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go chest and biceps to start and then back and triceps the second day and then legs and shoulders i guess you could go there's a, i'm curious if there's a bit dip station whatever but here's the point is after the workout kind of like tired like it was in zone two cardio for like because like according to that there was a heart rate monitor sort of thing um which is the optimal place to be I, apparently according to dr andrew Hubrun. <laughs> um i felt more energized when I got back rather than being tired. So that's cool because it's like <laughs> you work out and then you feel you have more energy. So I think that that is a good place to be. Like if I just go for a quick half hour, 45 minutes in and out way to start my day, that's a, that's a good place to start. So that was fun. Also what it allowed me to, because it got me out of bed, but when I got back, I still had time because the original plan in my plan of all plans was to read, but I actually edited videos. So then that was cool because I got some time in my day back. Like I think I edited for a full hour, like uninterrupted. So that was cool because if I got into the routine of that, again, that 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 is the product of work I would like to be spending that time with, even if it's not building towards something. I missed the stick and I think there's someone here. Um, okay. Then the other thing I was thinking about was because I watched the first video that I made of this and specifically where I was going like talking about how like um like the relationship we were destroying each other and like I had my resentments and specifically that sentence of I had my resentment since and I didn't like hearing that because what I heard was a deflection of responsibility kind of thing and I was like thinking about that going why why is that my initial knee-jerk reaction like I feel like there's to some degree I'm going like I'm blaming her and why is that not useful and I thought about it and here's the reason why is because 
what causes resentment normally from like we'll call it poor behavior from your partner or spouse cool what cause what what do you define as poor behavior the way i thought about it was like crossing someone's boundaries or mistreating them in some sort of way sorry there is a grasshopper Back to the serious talk. Mistreatment or crossing boundaries in some way. Now, okay, we can all agree that crossing boundaries or mistreatment is incorrect. However, unless that person is notified that such behavior or treatment is negative, then they are unaware of that to, to some degree. The, the, it's a complex way of saying, because I did not set or reinforce a healthy boundary for pot potential behavior that may or may not have existed in the relationship. That is what resulted in the resentment brewing, which is to say my inability to set boundaries contributed to the demise, the destruction, negatively contributed to the relationship, which is still on me. So, so going, if I go back in time and whenever that bad behavior was occurring that led to the resentment, I said, hey, no, you can't do that. And then a conversation ensued. The most logical outcome of that is that person to understand because generally people are reasonable. And then for that behavior to not persist, which then prevents any sort of resentment from building, which then pre prevents me from going like from acting ugly later on because resentment produces ugly behavior later on on disproportionate and unconnected to the stimulus <laughs> or the thing that causes that behavior to come out to begin with so again it, it just is to say going like no no, no it's on me so then I don't like hearing me go like oh I had my resentments like that justifies it to some degree it's like no 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 no, no that's wrong So then that was cool that I figured that out. Because then I was watching, I was watching a podcast. It was like, um, uh, it was, it's Layla Hormozy is on it. And then she's sitting across a woman who is British and she has her hair off to the side and braids. And they were talking about, well, they were talking about like business and like a bunch of things. Um, but then the conversation got to relationships. And I remember Layla said something like this is if you don't set healthy boundaries, you hurt the relationship. It was something along those lines. I forget what it was specifically, but more <laughs> what was cool was the same day I'm having this, the, the realization or the epiphany or just the aha, whatever you want to call it. The same day the environment shows me a video, um, which or a conversation, which kind of echoes the things that I'm thinking. Or you could say that I was actively looking for that and just noticed it because the conversation covered a lot of other things. This just happened to be one of the things that it was included in the conversation, which just happened to line up with what was going on inside of my mind at the current time and day that I saw it. In any case, smart, successful person, Layla has idea that is same as idea I just, I just discovered now which validates the idea that I'm having, which is figuring out how to set proper boundaries and communicate those clearly and effectively and being able to have that conversation promote and, and foster a healthy dynamic in a relationship. That was cool. What was the other thing I had to think about? Okay, that was the other thing. We'll move on to sales because today, I made 128 phone calls, dials, um, and only booked one meeting, which the person didn't show up to, but that's okay. Um, but one of the meetings that I booked yesterday, the one that I booked at the very end of the day, um, the person who hosted that meeting actually closed them. So then it turned out to be a good meeting. So then I just felt happy about that outcome. Um, and then it was kind of, it was, it sucked that there was no meetings demos booked today, 
other than the one. But there were plenty of pickups, plenty of disqualifications. The opener that I'm using now is like, hey, listen, this is a cold call, so you can hang up right now or give me the 30 seconds I need to explain what we do and then decide. And that every time I have said it has either resulted in a laugh or a, okay, you can have the 30 seconds. None of that has turned into, yes, I will like a demo, but the takeaway is not, the opener does not need to win the game. The opener needs to keep them on the phone. So if I'm talking to somebody who isn't ever going to be interested in what we have, there's nothing that I can say that can persuade them otherwise. And if I do say something that persuades them otherwise, it requires such a tremendous amount of effort. It's not really worth my or their time to begin with, or even the companies like that. They're just going to result in someone who buys the product, gets into the program, realizes they don't actually want it, complains about stuff, causes an issue in customer support, asks for a refund, which I don't think that any company actually, like it's, it's not an equal transaction. Like if we receive money and then, have to refund it, you have to go through a payment processor. So I assume that you would be losing money on a refund. That's just to say, selling to the person who doesn't actually want it doesn't gain anything. But figuring out that the person you're talking to doesn't actually need the thing that you're selling quickly is useful. Because then it's like, okay, I talked to 10 people, none of them wanted it, and none of them thought it was good for them. But at least that, that was the outcome. And then I guess that's what the UK's most hated sales trainer talk, talks about when like he goes, you want to be emotionally detached from the outcome because you don't want to be going like, oh fuck, I didn't get a demo today. It's like, how many conversations did I have? Actually, that is what he talks about. So as long as I'm talking, as long as I'm having conversations with potential financial advisors or insurance providers each day, then that, if I do that, continually over a long time frame, I will end up in booking demos, which will result in closing deals. Yeah, so the outcome that you're looking for is a conversation. That's what you need, not a an appointment set necessarily. Be because like, yes, of course you want the appointment set and you want to make sure that you're saying the right things that will lead someone to be a, an up get an appointment set. But what you want to figure out on the first call is, do they have the problem that we solve and do they want to fix it? If both of things, those things are true, then you want the appointment. But if one of those two, two things or neither of those two things are true, then you don't want the appointment. But yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm happy. It's interesting because I'm not exhausted. I actually feel better today having exercised. What I am curious is, because at this point, what I think is I'm going to go to the gym again Saturday morning. Like, okay, I'm, I'm doing it again tomorrow, but I think I can do it every single day this week. Because again, I'm not committing so much time to it that it's like, holy shit. But like, like I need to get in the habit of it, but I can see myself because I'm getting up at six, going to do something, eating well, being productive and being useful with that time. All of that is going to positively reinforce that sort of behavior. And the default of drink Friday night after do something productive, which was, was the outcome of last Friday night was, won't be there because I would prefer having the day I had today on Saturday than the day I had on Saturday of last weekend on Saturday, <laughs> you know? Which then also, because then I was, I was listening to myself talk and going like, that's, that's the whole thing of, you can't unlearn something, but you can learn something new to replace the thing you don't want to be doing anymore. But so I, I'm curious to see if that is what happens and I'm focused on making that to be the case. But because again, it's not going like you can never drink. It's not that, it is just don't make your default behavior be destructive. If you're gonna be destructive <laughs> and ingest what is technically a poison, well, just be conscious about it. Be like, you know what, today I'm gonna drink poison. Um, with that said, I think I'm good. And also, because I worked out this morning, I don't feel I have to go on this big, super long walk. I'm coming here because I like shooting the videos here. Um, but again, there isn't that pressure.
It's interesting, getting up early and working out gave me time back in my day and I feel good now. So, that's all I have to say for now.